look at that, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so how are you doing today? How are you enjoying being here in uh, sunny Central Florida? Oh, it's beautiful. I, I, I love it. The, it, it. the people here are amazing. Um, you guys have done a great job of, of creating such a wonderful space, and horror fans, hands down, are the best human beings on the planet. I think he's talking about you guys. All right, so if you guys have not been to a panel with me, my name is Matt Knowles. What I like to do with these panels is uh, we're going to have a conversation up here. We're just going to be chilling out, hanging out. But if you guys have a question, we want you to raise your hand early and often. We don't want you to wait until the last few minutes. If you have a question early, when we get to a natural breaking point, uh, we'll get your question answered. Just speak really loud because it's a loud room in here because there's a lot of people. And we'll get those questions answered as early as we can. So uh, let's talk about uh, the reason why you're probably up here is, uh, <laughs> is your main role. Let's, let's talk to him about the main role that you've been playing here in the, in the last few movies. Oh, man. I, you guys, what, a, what an amazing what an amazing journey it's been. Um, so, you know, the way this all happened was um, I had focused completely at that point on, um, on writing my own screenplays and making my own films. And I decided I wasn't going to audition anymore. I wasn't going to, you know, the only time I would work is if a friend called me and asked me for a job. And, and asked me to come work. So I worked on a few commercials and, you know, that kind of thing. But mainly I was focused on writing and producing. And um, Ron Hutchinson, who was the stunt coordinator on the Rob Zombie films, uh, called me up and said, hey, Jimmy, we're doing another Halloween. I was like, oh, so man, you're going to have a blast. He goes, yeah, well, so I read the script and um, I called David Green and I called Malika Cobb and I said, um, you know, the script is different than any of the uh, Halloween films and we need somebody who's a really good actor but also a really good stuntman. And there aren't many of those guys around. Most most guys focus on one or the other because it, it, it just takes a lot of focus, a lot of training. And David Gordon Green said, "Okay, so he's got to be six foot three, two hundred pounds, and he's got to be in his sixties. Do you know anybody?" And Ron was thinking about it and thinking about it. And my good friend Chris Nielsen, who's a, a, a stunt coordinator, a stunt man, um, he was like, "Ron, Jimmy Courtney." And so they called me, had me go down, and. Um, I did the audition, in other words, I went on tape um, in David's office, and then when I was done with the audition, I went out to the parking lot. I didn't even pull out of the parking lot. This was in Charleston, South Carolina. I didn't even pull out of the parking lot. Blumhouse called me from California, and they said, uh, are you available to shoot the film? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I didn't even get to the freeway, which is two hours, I mean, two miles away. They called me back again. They said, can you come back? David wants to meet you. And as far as I know, once David and I met, that was it. It was done deal. They didn't even look at anybody else. Huh. So, and you know, you guys, this, this, this journey, I mean, everybody who worked on Halloween on these three movies, are, they're all fans. So it's more than just a job for those of us who made these films. Because they're all fans, because we are all fans, we really wanted the fans to, like, know that we appreciate you. And we wanted to give you what we felt you would really enjoy. That sounds very similar. I've interviewed a lot of people from Star Wars, whether it's working on The Mandalorian or the video games, and they say everybody that works on anything Star Wars, they treat it with a reverence because they're like, this is this is our this is our thing. We're not trying to go anywhere past Star Wars. That's a reverence. And it sounds like you're saying the same thing here. Hey, this is a big franchise. It's been going on for decades. We want to do this thing right. And it sounds like the people felt the same way about this Halloween. Absolutely. And everybody has a Halloween story. Everybody has a Halloween story. Like, and everybody can tell you when they saw it the first time, the 78 version. And then there's all these debates that go on about which ones are better, which ones, I mean, it's, it's really, really cool. I mean, it's, really, it's just a bunch of nerds. You get 120 nerds together, you know, <laughs> nerding out on a Halloween film. It's really cool, you know. Are you guys nerds that are nerding out on Halloween films out here? Yeah. Power to the nerds, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, out of the three movies, do you have one of one that is your favorite that you worked on, or what a specific scene that you worked on that was your favorite in those movies? Well, really, for me, all three of these movies is one movie. Okay. So it's the first, second, and third act. You know, the first act being 2018, the second act being kills, third act being ends. Um, I I can't tell you anything about it, but my favorite scene. Will have will is in, in Halloween ends. It, it's absolutely in Halloween ends. It's it's the climax of the trilogy. It's powerful and beautiful. And um, but short of that, I have to say, working in the fire, um, working in fire for me was the best because um, 
It's so freaking dangerous. Um, yeah. Every time I was in fires, wearing two Nomex suits, you know, fire retardant suits, slathered in gel, and um, you know, for instance, when I walked through the burning house, um, I had to count the steps through the fire because. I couldn't open my eyes. If I opened my eyes, I'd burn my eyeballs. I couldn't breathe because if I breathed in, I would, I would roast my, my lungs and my throat. So I couldn't breathe, I couldn't see, I had to count the steps. It was burning, it was super, super hot. My skin was just like on fire, even with those two Nomex suits out of gel. Then when I got to the door, I could feel the rush of heat over my head. I knew where I was, I could slit my eyes at that point. Then I had to count the steps to the edge of the porch so I didn't fall over. But it was still just, just, just insanely hot, and then I could finally breathe when I got to the edge of the porch. So you know, working in those kinds of conditions, um, you have to be in a very peaceful place. You have to be in a very grounded, centered place, or you're going to get hurt. And and the fact is that you know that fire is so unpredictable. Um, but but the real the realism of that for me um, translates you know to to what you see on the screen. And and so yeah, that, I mean, but. When y'all see ends, you'll know why I say my favorite scene is in Halloween ends. And working in fire, that is, uh, that's no joke. Like you just said, if you were to breathe in, that's like gonna suck the air out of your lungs. You're done. You're gone. Toast. Yeah. Um, how do you prepare to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go be in a movie and I might die. I mean, legitimately, <laughs> I might die if I do this wrong. How do you mentally prepare yourself for a scene that's that intense? I, I think that, you know, the thing is, is, um, it, what I find is if, if because you just one has to naturally ground and center and it's, it's, it's a meditative state so I do everything I do on breath I've done a lot of breath work there's a guy named Max Strom S-T-R-O-M he's a friend of mine from years and years and years ago um, he travels the world teaching people how to breathe and you know breathing I mean once you learn how to breathe you can control you can control your heart rate you can control your brain patterns you can control your entire, you know, your entire existence if you learn how to breathe. So this is what I do when I play the character as well. I breathe the energy of Michael Myers into me. I breathe the shape into me. And then, and Sarah, my, my partner, will tell you, um, when I put that mask on, it's not me anymore. It's, it's not me. It's, it's the shape. And so I breathe that energy into me. Then when, when I hear check the gate, which means we continue 5, 10, 15, 20 takes, is as soon as I hear check the gate, that means we're going on to another setup. That's when I can release the character. And so then I do is I release the shape on the breath. So um, I encourage all of you to check out Max Strom's um, website because that's the tool I use to go to the place I go to, whether it's in fire, whether it's just playing the shape. Everything is done on the breath. That, that is absolutely wild. That's absolutely wild. Anybody have any questions out here? All right, right here, Mr. Ice Nine Kills, front row, what you got? What was it like working with Jamie Lee Curtis? Y'all, she's a badass. <laughs> you see? Yeah. I'd have to say she's a poster child for an empowered woman. And, and I was raised by, by a strong woman, by a powerful woman. I have six brothers. She had to be strong. And, and Jamie Lee Curtis is kind and generous, witty, self-deprecating, um, does not take bullshit from anybody. Heck yeah. Um, and physically... She fights like a freaking guy. I mean, she's like, she's, she's, and physically, she's in great shape. Um, she's an incredibly talented athlete, um, amazing actor, and and sincerely one of the one of the one of the most special human beings I've ever met. Awesome. Front row, what you got? 